It's one of humanity's most ambitious projects, a wall of concrete so massive it could pave a two-lane road from New York to Oklahoma City. And it was built to tame the river that carved the Grand Canyon itself. But today, this engineering marvel faces a crisis. Lake Mead, the largest reservoir in America, is disappearing, and the consequences could be devastating for 25 million people. Hey, I'm your host Regis, and today we're exploring the insane engineering of the Hoover Dam and why it might be facing its biggest challenge yet. To really understand this problem, we have to go back to the 1920s. You see, before the dam was built, the Colorado River was wildly unpredictable. In 1905, it broke through its banks, flooding the Imperial Valley and swallowing entire communities, farms, homes, entire groups of people, all gone. But flooding was only one issue. The nearby cities were expanding. Farmers needed reliable irrigation and everybody wanted electricity. The Colorado River could provide all of this if someone could figure out how to control it. Construction of the Hoover Dam itself began in 1931, at the height of the Great Depression. With millions of Americans desperate for work, the dam offered hope. Thousands of workers flocked to the Nevada desert, and at its peak in 1934, the project employed over 5,100 people. Boulder City had to be built just to house the workers. There were strict rules, no gambling, no alcohol, and no troublemakers. Nearly a century later, 15,000 people live there, and it's one of only two places in Nevada where gambling is still banned. The government had approved $49 million for the project, about a billion dollars in today's money. The plan was to build the dam 221 meters tall, higher than any other in the world at the time, and the reservoir it created, Lake Mead, would become the largest artificial lake on the Earth, capable of storing up to 38 cubic kilometers of water, enough to supply 90 million American homes for a whole year. With 10 times more concrete than the Empire State Building and the most powerful hydroelectric plant in the world, nothing like it had ever been attempted before. But before the engineers could think about designing the Hoover Dam, they had to find the right location, somewhere with walls strong enough to support all of that weight. Well, they found it in Black Canyon, with its sheer cliffs of volcanic rock rising hundreds of meters high. But building a straight wall across the canyon wouldn't work. The pressure from millions of liters of water would eventually crack the concrete and maybe even topple the entire structure. Instead, engineers designed a curved wall. The shape meant that the force of the water got distributed along the arch and into the canyon itself, rather than concentrating in on one spot. Think about an arched stone bridge. The curve of the bridge transfers weight to the pillars on either side. Well, the Hoover Dam works pretty much the same way. The walls create a structure that's naturally stable. The more the Colorado River pushes against the dam, the more securely the dam is held in place. The Hoover Dam is thicker at the bottom than at the top. At its base, it's as wide as three soccer fields, which gives it a low center of gravity, like a pyramid. But that massive base created another problem because when concrete hardens, it generates intense heat. If the engineers poured it all at once, the dam would have cracked from the inside out. The solution was to construct the dam in individual blocks, each containing cooling pipes carrying water. After each block cooled, workers filled the pipes with concrete before proceeding to the next section. The technique worked well, and some of the concrete is still curing up to this day. Yeah, the dam actually keeps getting stronger today. The engineers also had to think about what would happen underneath the dam. Water under pressure can force its way through tiny cracks in the rock, eventually destabilizing entire structures. So they designed a network of tunnels and galleries inside the dam itself, which collect any water that seeps through, relieving the pressure before it can cause problems. It was an ambitious plan, but how was it actually built? Before we dive into that, we quickly want to thank our long-term partner CyberGhost VPN for sponsoring this video. Have you ever hesitated to connect to a public Wi-Fi network in a restaurant, hotel, or airport for fear of someone stealing your information? Well, here's the solution. CyberGhost VPN, one of the best VPN services that encrypts your information and protects you while you browse the internet safely. 
With over 38 million users worldwide and a near-perfect score on Trustpilot, CyberGhost VPN is one of the most recommended services on the market. A VPN is essential for protecting your digital privacy. Your internet service provider, public Wi-Fi, or even websites can track what you do online. But with CyberGhost VPN, all your traffic is encrypted and your IP is hidden, keeping you completely anonymous. On top of that, you can use CyberGhost VPN on up to seven devices at the same time, be it on your cell phone, computer, or tablet, and even share it with your family and friends. It's perfect for protecting all your devices. Plus, CyberGhost VPN lets you unblock exclusive content from platforms like Netflix, Amazon Prime, and more in other countries, change your virtual location in a couple of clicks, and enjoy the United States catalog or any library that's not available in your region. And if you're still not sure, well, CyberGhost offers a 45-day money-back guarantee. Check them out at cyberghostvpn.com slash megabuilds for 84% off and four months for free, and start browsing safely. Thanks again to CyberGhost VPN for sponsoring this video, and now, let's take a closer look at how they built the Hoover Dam. Well, before construction could begin at all, engineers had to redirect the Colorado River. That meant creating four tunnels, each one wide enough to fit a four-story building. Workers used dynamite to blast through the canyon walls, creating over five kilometers of diversions to carry the river around the construction site. This was, unsurprisingly, dangerous work. In the tunnels, carbon monoxide from the explosions could be fatal. And high above the canyon floor, workers called high scalers dangled from ropes, clearing loose rock with jackhammers. One wrong move meant certain death. And for many, that's sadly exactly what happened. By the time the dam was finished, 96 men had lost their lives. Perhaps the most tragic story belonged to the Tierney family. J.G. Tierney drowned while surveying the river in 1922. Then 13 years later, literally to the day, his son Patrick fell from an intake tower, becoming the project's final casualty. To make the tunnel work more efficient, engineers developed the Jumbo Rig, a steel platform carrying 30 drills at once powered by compressed air. They used it to bore holes into the rock face for the dynamite. After each explosion, workers would clear the debris, check for any hanging rocks, and start the whole process over again. A key phase came when they had to seal off the river itself. They dumped thousands of tons of rock into the river, until the water diverted into the tunnels. As the river flowed around them, the engineers built temporary dams, called coffer dams, at both ends of the construction site. This created a dry area nearly two kilometers long where construction could begin. Except with the riverbed now dry, the workers discovered another problem. The foundation needed to be solid but centuries of river flow had left layers of mud and silt. They had to dig down 40 meters, about the height of a 12-story building, before they hit solid bedrock. The canyon walls also needed to be completely cleared, as any weak spots could compromise the structure. And then came the concrete work. To help with this, the engineers constructed a system of aerial cableways across the canyon. These transported buckets, each holding six cubic meters of concrete, to specific positions throughout the construction site. Inside the dam, four intake towers were built to feed water to the power plant below. The water would travel down through pipes large enough for a truck to pass through, each one 152 meters long. When the dam became operational, these pipes began feeding 17 turbines, generating enough electricity to power 1.3 million homes. Yeah, the scale on this thing is insane. But how does the Hoover Dam actually work? Well, it has two main functions, generating electricity and controlling the Colorado River. For flood protection, engineers built spillways on either side of the dam. Each one can handle almost 6,000 cubic meters of water per second. That's a ton of water. Imagine Niagara Falls suddenly appearing in the Nevada desert and you're pretty much there. And that's for each side. These spillways connect to tunnels 15 meters wide, directing excess water downstream when Lake Mead gets too full. They're basically an insurance policy. In the dam's entire history, they've only been used two times. Once in 1941 for testing, and again in 1983 during major floods. The dam can also release water in a more controlled way through its outlet works, 
basically giant valves that can be opened or closed as needed. This system irrigates over one and a half million acres of farmland, turning parts of the desert into some of America's most productive agricultural regions. It allows farmers to grow water-intensive crops like alfalfa all year round. The dam adjusts to changing demands, increasing water flow through turbines when power is needed, opening outlet works for irrigation, and maintaining spillways for flood control. This design has functioned effectively for nearly 90 years, but it also created problems that its builders never anticipated. And that is because of its impact on the environment. As we mentioned, when the Hoover Dam was first built, Lake Mead became the largest reservoir in America, deep enough to cover the whole of Pennsylvania in 30 centimeters of water. Within six years, the landscape had transformed. Cities like Las Vegas, Phoenix, and Los Angeles expanded beyond what the natural water supply would have supported. But it came at a cost. Beneath the lake, ancient wildlife habitats vanished overnight. The Colorado River was forever changed. Its natural flow, the seasonal floods and droughts that local species had evolved with, was now controlled by the turn of a valve. Downstream, the dam changed the river's natural temperature patterns. Four species of fish were pushed to the brink of extinction. It also trapped the river's sediment, which had previously flowed freely, nourishing wetlands and creating natural habitats. In Mexico, where the Colorado River meets the sea, 6,000 square kilometers of wetlands began to disappear. Birds that had followed ancient migratory patterns for thousands of years suddenly found their routes disrupted. And as Lake Mead filled, it submerged numerous Native American archaeological sites, including an ancient Puebloan settlement known as the Lost City. Though archaeologists raced to save what they could, many artifacts remain underwater. But on the flip side, the reservoir created new ecosystems of its own. Fish species adapted to the lake environment, new wetlands formed along its shores, and plenty of animals now depend on it. Plus, it's a recreation destination for 7 million visitors every year. But today, Lake Mead faces a new challenge, water scarcity. The lake's surface has dropped 50 meters from its high point, creating a white bathtub ring on the canyon walls, a visible reminder of just how much water has been lost. In 2022, it fell to 27% capacity, the lowest since the 1930s, and the dam is producing 40% less electricity than at its peak. That's enough lost power to run hundreds of thousands of homes. The situation has become so serious that both Arizona and Nevada have been forced to cut their water usage. As you might expect, climate change is at least partly to blame. The Colorado River Basin has been experiencing its worst drought in 1,200 years. But there's another factor. The Southwest has simply grown far beyond what the dam's original builders could have imagined. Las Vegas alone has expanded from a small desert town of 8,000 people when the dam was built to over 660,000 people today. This is a big problem because Las Vegas gets 90% of its drinking water from Lake Mead. If the water level drops by another 18 meters, two intake structures will become unusable. So what is the solution here? Southern Nevada Water Authority has already built a new tunnel deeper in the lake, costing over $800 million that guarantees reliable water supply even if the water level drops. Meanwhile, Arizona is experimenting with water banking. It's currently stored over 4.5 cubic kilometers of water in facilities across the state, and California is increasing its focus on recycled water. The Hoover Dam has enabled development throughout the Southwest for almost a century. The question now isn't whether the dam will hold. It's whether there will be enough water for it to hold back. But what do you think about the future of the Hoover Dam? Let us know your thoughts in the comments down below. And if you want to try out CyberGhost VPN, use our link for 84% off and 4 months for free, as well as 45 days money back guaranteed. Enjoy having full access to blocked content on the internet while browsing safely. As always, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.